Good evening folks, it's Steve Cat5J. I hope everyone's doing okay out there this evening. Tonight's video, I want to talk about decibels. This is something that I have been uh, going over and I wanted to share with you some of the uh, some of the new stuff I have discovered. Most coax manufacturers always give their uh, coax loss in decibels. And I'm in the process of upgrading my station to some new uh, DX400 LMR cable. And I kept finding all of the uh, coax losses were in decibels. So I really had a hard time trying to rationalize that with, well, if I have 100 watts at the radio, how much am I going to have at the end of the coax? So I had a hard time figuring all that out. So I went back to some of my general notes and, uh, and things, and I kind of, put together some things because uh, I kind of wanted to know uh, how much power. So in tonight's video, I'm going to go over some different coaxes that we looked at, uh, some of the different log, uh, two of the different log um, formulas that you that you would typically come across in your ham radio experience, uh, a couple of test pool questions, and some examples of some coax efficiencies. These are some of the coaxes that I had looked at, and what I ended up going with was the uh, DX400, uh, which has a, a pretty good loss uh, uh, factor, or really, I should say low loss factor, particularly particularly at 30 megahertz, which is where I'm going to be using it, particularly at 10 meter, it had about 0.8 dB. This is some of the data sheets I looked at. So here's the uh, reason why I made the video tonight. I wanted to show you if you're looking at a piece of coax, for example, and the coax manufacturer says, well, I have 2.4 dB attenuation at 100 feet. And by the way, most all coaxes are uh, attenuation is given at 100 feet. So just kind of an FYI there that that'll be a test question. It'll come up on the general. So just remember 100 feet. The question was, or my curiosity was, well, how much is 2.4 dB at 150 megahertz if I have 100 watts coming out of my radio? How many watts am I going to have at the end of the antenna? That's what I wanted to know. So that's why I made the video, is to show you if you have 100 watts here, how many watts am I losing down that coax? So that's what we want to know. In ham radio, there's essentially two common formulas that you're going to use, and it depends on what information is given in the particular question or the scenario. If you have the decibels available in your scenario or in your data sheet, for example, you would use this formula here. You would basically just follow this, this formula here. If you did not have the database, and for example, if the question is asking you for the decibels, I'm sorry, I said database, I meant decibels. If the question is asking you for the decibels, but in the question it's giving you the units in the same unit, for example, watts, you might have maximum power here, and then you would have power measured. With this formula here, you could calculate the decibels. So two different formulas that you'll run across, and these are the two, and if you just get familiar with these and, you, and you'll be good. These are the buttons here on the TI-30Xs, which is what I'm using in today's video. Just a quick example here, this shows you a uh, example of a 1 dB up and a 1 dB down. And on our calculator here, we'll do these, we'll do these real quick. We'll just do, for example, we'll do shift log. And then we'll put 1 dB up divided by 10. And that's going to give us a factor of 1.26. So, for example, if you have an antenna with a, a dB gain of 1, dot, of, of 1 dB, it's going to give you a factor of 1.26. So 10 watts coming out of your radio would equate to 12.6 watts in that particular radiation pattern. Same thing with 100 watts. Now, let's say, for example, you had a 1 dB uh, cable, <clears throat> excuse me, a 1 dB loss in the cable. We would do the same formula, and we would do a negation key 1. That's the negation key right there, not the negative key, but the negation key 1 divided by 10. 
and that's going to give us 79% efficiency through the coax, meaning roughly a 20% loss. So if you had a coax that manufactured with a negative 1 dBd, you would get 79% through the coax with about a 20% loss. This is the same thing with uh, 3 dB. We could do one real quick here. Shift log. If we had a 3 dB gain, that would be a factor of 2. So for example, if you have an antenna that has a 3 dB gain, a, a Yagi for example, you would have, instead of having 100 watts, you would have uh, 200 watts. But let's say, for example, you had a coax that had a minus 3 dB gain, RG58, for example. You would do shift log, negation key 3, divided by 10. That would give you a 50% throughput, or roughly about a 49% loss on your coax. Now let's, run, let's do a problem here. Let's say, for example, you're running a test, and you have 100 watts coming out of your antenna or your radio, but you're... Uh, testing shows 126 watts coming out of the antenna, for example. This is what you would do here. You would do 10 to the base log of 10, and our test shows 126 divided by 100 watts. That would be a dB gain of 1. But let's say, for example, you had a coax that had a minus 1 dB loss. We would do 10. <clears throat> To the log base of 10, 79.4 watts coming through the coax divided by 10 would give us, whoops, uh, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. 10 to the log base of 10, 79.4 divided by 100 watts. That's going to give us a down dB of 1 or roughly a 20% loss. So that, that's how you do both sides of the equation. And here's one with a dB up and also dB down. Same, Pretty much the same idea. Uh, we can do one real quick here. 10 to the base log of 10. If we had 200 watts at the antenna in the particular radiation pattern over 100, that would give us a gain of 3 dB. But, say for example, we had a coax, RG58X, which has a pretty high loss. Uh, we would do 10 to the base log. And let's say, for example, we're only reading 50 watts divided by 100. That would give us a negative 3 dB gain or 50% loss. All right, so let's go back to our question here. We are shopping for coax. we looking at this data sheet here, and it says I've got 2.4 dB at 150 megahertz. So here's what we already know. We have 100 watts coming out of our radio on our test. Our frequency is 150 megahertz, and we want to know how much is 100 watts here, how much are we going to have here. So let's do the math. There's two formulas we need to look at. Number one is, do we use this formula here, or do we use this formula over here? So right now, looking at this, we already have, and this is what's important, uh, you want to look at what is, what is, what information is available. We have the decibels. Now over here, we do not have the decibels. So this is the problem we're going to use. So let's go ahead and do this. There's the buttons we're going to use right there on the TI-30X. So let's do the math. We have in our problem, we have 2.4 dB at 150 megahertz. Well, how much loss are we going to have or how much power are we going to get at the end of the cable? So here's the formula we're going to use. Now let's go ahead and solve for this. We'll clear it out. We're going to type shift 10x, negation key 2.4 over 10 times 100 watts. We have 57.4, 57, 57.54 watts, which is 
by the way, let's take a look. That's exactly what we have here, 57 watts. So that's how you solve the problem. If you have 2.4 dB at 150 megahertz, this right here, this is the formula you use. That's how many watts are going to get through the coax. So that's how you work that type of problem. And there's our answer, 57. These are some test questions. We're going to come back to these probably in a different video, but uh, I wanted to kind of familiarize you with there are a lot of the test questions you can easily solve with the two, uh, two formulas that I showed you because uh, I wanted you to just kind of have an awareness of this. And I'll probably go back and do a different video on these differently, uh, not just, just so I could give plenty of time. Uh, the, the last thing I wanted to show you was decibels in gain and decibels in loss. So let's take a look at that real quick here. What's real important is what you're going to realize is in your world of decibels, there's three, six, and nine. Now if you notice each one of these three equates to double the gain, six equates to four times the gain, nine equates to eight times the gain. But just, just for an example, let's take a look at this problem here real quick. Let's take a look at this over here. We have a 3 dB gain, which is two times the gain. Now on this particular graph, what I'm showing you here is this is 1 dB is 126 watts, and this is starting off at 100 watts, and 1 dB gain, 2 dB gain, 3 dB gain is double power, 6 dB gain is four times the power, and 9 dB gain is eight times the power. But let's let's do the uh, the 3 dB real quick. We're going to do shift, excuse me, shift log, 3 over 10, and that's going to give us a gain of 2, and that's exactly what we have here. 3 dB with a gain of 2. We're starting with the 100 watts, and there we have 200 watts. All right. So that's just kind of wanted to show you kind of what the logs look like whenever you're looking at a log going up. Let's look at the log going down. Same thing here. Now we have a minus 3 dB seam. So let's go ahead and get our calculator ready. On a minus 3 dB gain, what we would do is we would type shift log negation key 3 divided by 10. That's going to give us a 50% throughput. So what the key is, we get a 50% throughput at a minus 3 dB, which gives us this number right here. Half power, 50% throughput, and 49% loss. So that's what the reverse um, uh, decibels look like. You have up, up going up. 3 dB is two times. 6 dB is four times. 9 dB is eight times. And that's pretty much how it works. Same thing here. Negative 3 dB is 50% loss. 6 dB is 75% loss. 9 dB is 87% loss. So Anyway, that's how it works. So the main thing is you, we need to look for, uh, when you're talking about decibels, if you have the decimals available to you, this is the formula that you're going to use. If you don't, you know, if you have the alternate one where it's giving you power measured and power maximum, this is the decimals you're going to use. So anyway, I hope this helps. There'll be more videos to come. I'm kind of taking a deep dive here. But uh, again, thanks again for watching 73 from KI5JF. And uh, appreciate everybody watching. I'll get back to you. I really enjoy the comments. And uh, hey, this is fun. We're learning new stuff. This is my first decibel video. So it probably needs some improvement. But you know what? I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show you some of my learning experiences and some of my research. All right, 73, thanks again.